Well, hello and welcome to my hobby shop. I have just uh, milled one cast iron part for my new project. Let me show you what this will be. Okay, here is the rest of the parts. If I manage to do all the machining and measurements in a correct way, this will be a universal pillar tool. All the drawings is in this book. The book and the tool is made by George H. Thomas. He's a British guy. He wrote a lot of nice articles in uh, Model Engineer magazine, I think it was, and uh, he have designed a lot of nice tools. He also wrote another book with a lot of workshop tips. I will show you more from this book later. Now, I started to machine the top surface of the arms, but before I did that, I have to take care of the parts. And as Mr. Thomas recommended in his book, you should put the cast iron parts in a diluted bath of um, sulfuric acid, and that should not be done in the workshop because everything will corrode after that. So I did it outside. After that all the parts were cleaned with uh, a wire wheel. And I used a coarse file to remove the hard scaling on the areas where I should mill this part and uh, the parts. Uh, by the way, the castings and the book is sold by Hemingway Kits. You can buy the castings together with all the hardware or just the castings. I will put a link in the description to Hemingway Kit and to the Universal Pillar Tool. Okay, let's, let's take a look at the castings. Uh, they're quite nice in fact, uh, although this one is a little bit, uh, hmm, what do you say, it's not in line looks like uh, that uh, that half have been moved a little bit backwards so I'm a little bit afraid that I will be a little bit short of material on that side but uh, we, we will see when we get to that point. And the first mailing operation was just to flatten one surface so I have some kind of reference point. Uh, luckily the casting are quite uh, good in this plane, so, so if, we, if you check it with its square, it's, uh, it, it's quite alright. I hope you can see, see this. Uh, we have one plan on the, on the lower arm for the, for the pillar tool and one uh, sketch for the arm that should be the drilling head. There is a lot of measurements but there is no measurement how wide it should be. For instance if we take a look at this sketch from the end to the bottom of this hole it should be three quarter of an inch. But nowhere it's mentioned how wide it should be. The only clue is this diameter, one and a quarter of an inch. So the only solution I have is to use one and a quarter of an inch. And that means that I have to remove, uh, what is it, uh, sext on the L. Ah, roughly. Uh, one point uh, 
some millimeters in all. Say I remove uh, 0.6 millimeter on each side of this one to have a width of uh, one quarter of an inch and uh, the same with this one. Then I have something to measure from where the holes should be. Uh, the smaller arm on the other hand are a little bit slimmer. I will use one and a quarter of inch on the wider parts and then I do this one a little bit uh, less. We will see how it how it turns out. So what I will do now is uh, mill the other side and try to get the height of the arms to one and a half inch. So uh, this one have to take away almost a quarter of an inch. So let's start. Okay now all the parts are milled on the other side as well. But I didn't mill it all the way down so I have uh, uh, one and a half inch height of the parts. Uh, I like to find the center in this area so I have the same distance from the center to the bottom and to the top. And um, I think it's better to mill this surface first. And um, as the smaller arms are a little bit uh, slimmer on this side, I milled and uh, grounded this little piece just to keep the, keep the distance. And uh, that way I will have uh, all the parts in sa same dimension. It makes it easier for the rest of the work. And of course something interesting happened. Now everything is set up again and we are ready to mill. Uh, if my calculation is right, we should, re should remove 1.37 of a millimeter on this side. When we reach that, we sh should remove 2.3 on this side. I scribed a center line. From the center line it's three quarter of an inch up to the top of the part. So I have to mill away that piece. I do the same on all three pieces, turn them around and make them one and a half inch high. Next time I will drill the holes in this area on all three parts. We'll make some brass pieces that should be located in here. We need them before we drill the holes through the arms where the pillar should be mounted. Well, see you next time and thank you for watching.